Hello Internet, it's an absolute pleasure having you today and we want to give a special shout out to the mums for Mother's Day. It's so awesome to have you here. Today is week two of But You Promised, buckle up for an awesome adventure. If you guys are at home and you've been enjoying our content for a while now, how about sharing it with someone you reckon may be interested, liking our channels or subscribing so you get the notifications during the week that we're on. Here's our awesome worship partner today. It's Gateway Church from Texas.
enthroned in glory, my Savior King. Your loving kindness has welcomed me. Though I'm unworthy of majesty, you wrap the lowly in royalty. So I will lay my crowns down at your feet. Cause you are holy.
So here it is, guys. But You Promised, part two, a special Mother's Day edition taken by our very own Mark Pomery. Well, hey there, Elevate friends and family. Great to have you with us today. Now, before we get into the message, I just need to let you know I do have a case of man flu, uh, which uh, sometimes is fatal. I think we'll get through this. But uh, yeah, my voice sounds a little bit weird, so just bear with us. Um, now, speaking of uh, illnesses, it's just over four years ago since many parts of the world went into lockdown, <clears throat> including here in Perth. And uh, this time of the process, we were still in lockdown or lockdown 1.0. And one of the things that essentially characterized lockdowns was restrictions about what you're not allowed to do, about where you're not allowed to go. Um, you know, we weren't allowed to have social gatherings. We weren't allowed, to, you know, our kids weren't allowed to uh, play their sports and have their activities. We were even restricted from how far we could drive from our home. And I know this had some pretty uh, bleak consequences for a lot of people regarding social and mental health and so on and so forth. But it is true to say that during that time of lockdown, there was a lot less moving parts, uh, less things to have to organize, less places to have to go, less being mom and dad's Uber driver for our kids' endless list of activities. Well, here we are four years later and everything's returned to normal and the moving parts have crept back in. And here we are with this uh, ongoing list of things to do, places to be, and so on and so forth. And that, of course, is just on top of all the things that didn't stop. You know, bills to pay, house to clean, food to cook, deadlines to meet, difficult people to deal with. And then there's stuff that just you know, unexpectedly life just throws at you. You know, the car that suddenly needs repairing, the interest rates that have steadily gone up, uh, maybe the, the bad news from a medical professional. Uh, and then just like out there, we're surrounded by turmoil and news of turmoil, of wars and protests and political tensions and tragedies taking place just constantly. And when you put this all together, it's absolutely no mystery as to why a lot of people find themselves feeling stressed, feeling anxious, feeling fearful, lacking this sense of internal peace. So we've launched this series, which we've called But You Promised. And you know, we're just riffing very intentionally with that title on this idea of Junior holding mum or dad to something that they said they were going to do. You said we were going to go to the restaurant. You said we were going to go get the ice cream. You said we were, but you promised. And uh, maybe unlike parents who... Well, it's probably their prerogative to change their mind. The great news about Jesus is that everything he promised, he will make good on. He will not change his mind. So last week we launched with this great promise that Jesus wants us to hear his voice. That as followers of Jesus, we can both recognize his voice, we can hear his voice, and therefore with a reasonable amount of clarity, we can obediently do what he says. And then in doing what he says, we can experience his promises. Well, today I want to talk to this idea that Jesus wants to give us peace. Yeah. In 2024, what, a, what an important gift. So if you've got your smartphone, scan this flow code. It's going to take you to John's a biography of Jesus to chapter 14 and uh, this promise that Jesus will give us peace. So while you're doing that, let me give you the context. Jesus had just taught uh, 
his disciples and people gathered, it's like a series of incredible teachings. You can scroll back and read them for yourself. I highly recommend that. And uh, one of the threads that Jesus uh, put towards the end of this block of teaching was letting his followers know that he was going that he was leaving this earth, that he was going to go back to be with his father, which they didn't fully understand, but also they typically found themselves quite confused and a little bit anxious. So Jesus starts to assure them, it's okay. In fact, it's ultimately going to be better because when I go, I'm going to actually send you some gifts. Now, the first of these gifts that Jesus promised in this little uh, slice of history was the gift of his Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, I didn't have time to cover that here, but look, it, it's vital. The, God's Holy Spirit is not the backup singer, is not the, waiting in the green room, hoping maybe to get the call up. God's Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, we taught a series, this series here called The Ghost. And it's just a full week, like Holy Spirit 101 starter kit. And uh, look, go back and watch that or listen to that on our podcast. Uh, it's absolutely like foundational. So there's that. Then Jesus promised another gift that is also a game changer. And this is what he promised. I'm leaving you with a gift peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Five words that have the potential to change your life. Peace of mind and heart. Jesus also made the point of drawing the contrast between the gift of peace that he gives and the fact that this is something the world we live in cannot give. Now, the world promises a version of peace, but at best, it's temporary. You know, it might help us cope in the short term. You know, going on a vacation is a great thing. But look, it's a temporary escape because when we come back, pretty much everything's the same and we're still there as well. You know, the world says maybe medicate to find some form of peace. Medicate with food, medicate with booze, medicate with drugs. But like, first of all, they're only going to be short term well, I'll say versions of peace, very imperfect. Plus, they actually typically make things worse downstream. The world promises if we can have a little more money to clear the bills, then we'll have peace. And, and by the way, I believe that. But the problem that too many people make is when they get a little bit more money, they spend a little bit more money and they find themselves just in this constant trap of little to give, nothing saved, and growing amounts of consumer debt. So we're going to talk about the peace that Jesus gives, but just right off the bat, the peace that Jesus gives, not only can the world not give it, the world can't take it away either. So there's that. Now, right around this very same time, uh, Jesus had been teaching. He was tired. It was getting late in the afternoon, approaching evening. He needed to just to get away. And... Uh, the crowd was still there. So he said, well, let's get in a nearby boat and let's actually go across the sea, the Sea of Galilee, go to effectively the other side and just kind of bed down for the night and just catch our breath. So they got on, Jesus and his closest disciples. 
Well, Mark records that as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, you know, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. Jesus was pretty popular. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. And Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion while the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care? that we're going to drown? Now, if you've ever faced storms in your life, and let's, we all have, okay? Have you ever thought that about Jesus? Jesus, don't you even care? Have you ever been so bold as to even say that? Jesus, don't you even care? Without realizing that Jesus is like, care? Yeah, I care. I'm actually in the boat with you. I didn't send you out on your own, even though I knew there were storms in your future. I didn't jump overboard when the storms started. No, I'm right here. I ain't going anywhere. In the midst of the storm, I will be with you. And I promised we were going to get to the other side. I didn't promise there wouldn't be storms on the way but I promised I'd be with you all the way. So when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind. And then he said to the waves, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, why are you still so afraid? You still have no faith. And we can get a little bit judgy. Oh yeah, I mean, come on, is, you know, disciples, why did you get so rattled if you know Jesus was there the whole time? And we know that he controls the wind and the waves and all of creation. But is anybody out there willing to admit that there's a possibility that in that moment you might have reacted the exact same way or taking it to our current reality that you have in the midst of a storm reacted the exact same way. Well, then the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other, even the wind and waves obey him. The one thing that we all know is that visible storms on the outside can trigger invisible storms on the inside. That's true. We know that. We've had that. We, we, some of you might be experiencing that right now. Some visible storms on the outside, some external circumstances have created some invisible storms, though still very real, on the inside. That This is what we need to understand, that true peace isn't found in the absence of problems, True peace is found in the presence of Jesus, that he will give us his peace, even in the midst of turbulence and storm. Now, about 20 years ago, uh, I was flying from, well, I was in a plane that was flying from Sydney to Perth. It was like a sort of like a dinner time departure from Sydney, headed back to Perth. And we were about an hour into the journey. It's about a five hour flight. We're about an hour into the journey. And all of a sudden, there was this almighty bang. And I saw out of the window, out of the corner of my eye, what looked like a flash of fire. And I'm thinking to myself, I really hope that's not a flash of fire. Well, it was a flash of fire. One, one of the engines had exploded. Yep, that exact moment made the nightly news in Sydney and in Perth, which my wife didn't find very reassuring. So there we were, all the passengers in this plane. Some of us had seen fire, all of us had heard the bang, and uh, we were like, okay, this doesn't look good. But one thing I'd learned years earlier when it comes to flying, when, you, when something appears to be a bit off, you know, extreme turbulence, uh, well, in this case, an engine blowing up, 
kind of didn't expect that was going to happen ever, but it did. Uh, whatever the circumstances, what I had learned years before is look to the cabin crew. Don't look to the other passengers because we're all clueless. Look to the cabin crew because what the cabin crew know is that there's somebody at the helm of this plane who actually knows what they're doing. And the people in charge, the qualified, the trained, the experienced ones, if they're not freaking out, which thankfully they weren't, then there's no reason for you to freak out. So that's exactly what I did. I looked to the cabin crew and they were totally, totally calm, at peace. And what happened in that moment is they gave me their peace. The other passengers couldn't give it to me. In fact, if I looked at them, I would have probably freaked out as well. But this is this idea that even in the midst of turbulence and storms, when we look to Jesus, he can give us not just a peace, but he can give us his peace. Which, by the way, means it's possible to have peace when your marriage is experiencing some turbulence. It's possible to have peace when your teenager starts hanging out with some questionable company. It's possible to have peace when the doctor gives you some challenging news. It's possible to have peace when money is too tight to mention. Because here's the reality. Jesus didn't promise us an absence of storms. He did, however, promise us the gift of peace in the storms. Now, one of the realities of how external storms can trigger internal storms is that a lot of our lack of peace starts here in the mind. It's like a battlefield. And it oftentimes comes down to what you're focusing on in the midst of the storms. So what about you? What do you focus on in the midst of the storms? Do you default, like gravitate you know, immediately towards worst case scenario? You know, oh, here's what's obviously going to go wrong. Um, do, do you re re retreat or regress to destructive patterns, which... You know, they didn't serve you well in the past either, but you kind of haven't grown to some better approaches. Or, you know, maybe like, well, I can remember the time and something negative happened, so it's only a matter of time before that's going to happen again. And this just stirs up more and more anxiety, more and more worry, less and less peace. Well, there's an antidote <laughs> and the antidote isn't something as Jesus said that the world can offer us but it is available to us and in fact God spoke this through a spokesperson a, a prophet named Isaiah and this is what God said to us you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you this is like Hey, God will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed on him. So right there, and, 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 and I talked about this a lot last week, about the importance of hearing God's voice and learning his truth and consistently reading his word. This matters here as well. Learn God's truth and focus on it in the storms, not the storms, not the circumstances, not the lies you've been telling yourself, not the lies that other people have been telling you. Focus on who God is and what he says to be true about you and about the peace that's available to you in the midst of storms. You might not get it first time, probably won't get it every time, but the more you focus on God and his word and his promises 
and his character and his steadfast nature, his faithfulness, and open yourselves up to his peace, the more that becomes the new normal in our minds and our hearts when the storms inevitably come. If you want to help us at Elevate, reach and build into people just like you all over the world, the ways to give can be found just below. Until then, guys, have a blessed week. And to all the mothers, enjoy your day.